Everyone might agree that the Hilltop issue is a multifaceted, complex crisis full of mixed priorities, chronological confusions, and a jumble of dollar signs that seem to change at every minute. We at the Safe Hilltop Coalition have been dedicated to getting all these details out and fitting into this enormous puzzle. A puzzle that, when complete, may just be intelligible for everyone. One way of getting this across has been through using some sort of analogy. The idea being that if you don't understand political jargon, New Hampshire safety fire codes, or Teresa Shrews' beautiful Irish accent, you may understand certain analogies. Drawing a feasible solution from one thing to another thing, therefore highlighting the problem and solution of the matter. Dan Beeson has done well to dispel the myth that the new school is like a Cadillac. While some members of the community would agree and say, in fact, it only costs like a new Cadillac, let's really break down this car analogy. McLeod had mentioned that the whole new school hilltop issue is kind of like buying a new car or repairing your old one. If your tires burst, if you don't like the upholstery, or if the oil gets low, you don't simply scrap that car for a new one. Instead, you repair the car and give it the proper maintenance over the course of its lifetime. We at the SHC kind of like this only insofar as it highlights the fiscal mentality of the city. Because if you buy that new car and then the engine stalls again, you'll have no understanding of how to get help. Because you haven't tried the repair venue. You haven't tried thinking critically and coming to our public hearing. And you haven't tried historical preservation. You simply don't know how good it is for you. But these analogies can get a little bit slippery. Jim Wigan presented us with a similar model, only he preferred to use a lawnmower. Same situation, something drastic happens to your lawnmower, and then for whatever reason, you leave it lying in the rain for about nine years. At which point, you get a new lawnmower. I would tend to agree with this model. At some point, the cost of renovation is going to be equal or greater to buying this new lawnmower or new school. But we at the Safe Hilltop Coalition have one problem with these analogies, rendering them ineffective. Lawnmowers aren't governed by the American with Disabilities Act. Car manufacturers don't have to meet New Hampshire state fire codes. And even if you can get past all these barriers, it simply doesn't fit. These material analogies can do nothing to speak of the consequences and implications of renovating Hilltop School or getting a new school. One of the things these analogies can address is the childhood obesity epidemic we have in America. Renovating one of our oldest schools and promoting the Walkable Hill community and downtown area can keep the kids on the street and keep them active. The Stackpole School, on the other hand, sits on the corner of a very busy street and a sidewalkless one with a long, winding road. Busing what would likely be over half the population of our students to that school does little to solve this epidemic. Another situation that the, this analogy can address is the benefit of historic preservation. The difference here is that new cars and new lawnmowers are typically better units. They're better for the road, they're safer, and often more efficient. But noticing the urban landscape, on the other hand, historic preservation is a step in the right direction. One only needs to look at Portsmouth to see how turning a dump into a strawberry bank museum can boost tourism and property value. Having a John Deere or Cadillac may look nice in your yard, but it does little to enhance your property value. Historic preservation, on the other hand, would. And if you think that because you don't live in the Hill community that you're not concerned about the boosting of property value, think again. The rise of property value for some is actually the lowering of property taxes for you. So let's look at these numbers and specifically what it will mean for your taxes. The best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. That's what I want. That's what I want. Some citizens are concerned that you can't compare these two costs because one is for a 450 student school while the other is for a much smaller school. But the fact of the matter is, there is a lot at stake at losing Hilltop and losing it as an elementary school. Of course, not all issues can be solved by renovating Hilltop, but you certainly can't solve all the issues with the new skull either, and it's a much greater cost. So what can you do, Somersworth? Well, you can start by signing our petition, whether online or in person, and you can find it at safehilltop.wordpress.com. Secondly, you can come to our public hearing next Thursday, August 14th, at 6 p.m. in the Hilltop Elementary School Library. We're going to have tons of people there. We're going to have presentations, discussions, and debates about what the problem really is and what the solutions really are. 
I'm Emmett Soldati, a member of the Save Hilltop Coalition and a resident of Somerset, New Hampshire. Thanks for watching. The best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. <laughs>